making your perfect grocery list for your week <laughs> cheese cheese so we're sitting Bottled here water we're getting ready to do the podcast and i see all these little like notes on uh on felton's computer and it's one of them's a shopping list and it's you know uh gluten-free pasta veggie buns and then cheese with a question mark is in you know do i want cheese or was it more like you know was it more of a surreal thing like is cheese an actual you know uh, product like is it not is it a manifestation of my own what imagination <laughs> anyways so uh today well i actually gave you some homework but i doubt you did it because you've been so busy lately oh no i, I didn't i didn't get a chance of course to not no. so you didn't look up the star wars battlefront 2 oh, i have seen some of the uh some of the content and trailers for it but <clears throat> so what are you thinking from what you've seen so far aren't they taking it in a bit of a different direction well, first they're gonna have a first. Per- I don't think they had a first person. Uh, or a, a, was it a? Yeah, they didn't have like a first person campaign thing or something like that. Or they didn't have a campaign. Mode oh, now it's gonna right. have a campaign. Yeah, this time yeah. it's gonna have like a story mode. That's what I'm trying to say. Story you know, mode. another game did that. Hmm. It was called Battleborn. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like all the features. I mean, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm being serious for a second. It seems like all the features that Battleborn had and mm-hmm. did well. Uh, all these other games are stealing like vultures, but it's like Battleborn already had that. Why? Why wasn't it more popular? You just know? one of those things, man. It's just like <laughs> just not the right time, I guess. Or you know, people they, weren't ready for it. Like, it was big too trouble. much all at once because they had all that stuff at the same time. It's yeah. too much at once. Like people were like, oh, I don't know, I don't, know what to, I, I can't. What? Ooh, what, 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 what it's too much. <laughs> and like Overwatch, where they're like, oh hey, you get a PvP mode this week. Yeah, it's yeah. like they're an overbearing parent. Like Cast. you can't play it too much. But you know what? You'll it's working for it. them. Though, so. I know a bunch of assholes. I'd be like, we know you like McCree, but. No, fuck him. Like, oh, God. <laughs> we'll give you a teaser. We'll make his ultimate better. We'll talk about that later. I'm not going to get into that right now. So, yeah, this time there's the there's the story mode, and it looks like it follows uh, a member of the Empire, you know, as uh, as the Empire falls and, and things like that. So that's interesting uh, to see, and it goes through the majority of the, uh, the original. Well, I think it starts, like, towards the end of the original uh, trilogy. Yes. No, no, I take that back. I think it starts at the end of the prequels, towards the end of the prequels, and then, you know, it falls through the... Well, I thought Palpatine was all up in it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He is all up in it, but that's, you know, that's the original trilogy. I think this is this is a stormtrooper, like a, some kind of elite female stormtrooper who's, uh, you know, disappointed that the Empire falls and stuff, and yada, yada, yada. But there's, uh, there's, they're talking about how you're going to see, like, things from the, em- from the Empire's standpoint, you know, so you're going to, like... I guess you'll be, you know, visiting worlds where there's, there's, you know, they're fully functioning in the empire, and you see just people living their lives. No, which we haven't really seen before, exactly. other than, um, like in books and things like that, but not, you know. Well, now Star Wars Galaxies, you didn't even really get to see that because, mm-hmm. well, I guess you know you had space stations and you had some empire planets that were, mm-hmm. they were kind of contested, but I don't actually ever remember like a. Just like you're, you're, you know, bumming around like Empire, you know, planet being on. Yeah, well, and there's going to be story, I think, that goes along in there, too, like with her family and things like that. So, you know, it'll be an interesting take. Um, they're from, all clones. From what I'm, from what I'm hearing, they're, they're, you know, fixing a lot of the issues that, they're, that, they're, that they had with uh, the first-person shooting game of it and everything. Uh, there's going to actually be, like, real functioning classes and stuff, and uh, we'll see. Well, I, I was know, so Battle disappointed... Fight. I was so disappointed in the, in the in that other one. So well, you know, the Battlefront was just kind of it was a Battlefront two. Mm-hmm. Um, I played it, and the only reason I even got anywhere was because they had like some insane like four x XP multiplier weekend, mm-hmm. and there was like the droid run mode. And if you got somebody on the other team to sit there and bounce the droid back and forth between you, yeah, you could just get obscene amounts of XP. Yeah. So that's all I did, and <laughs> I got like all the content and all the unlocks, and I was like, well. 
I'm it would have taken me a year and a half to get this far. So, mm-hmm. I mean, just the pacing of the game was so slow to get the unlock. So yeah. only the people that were like the most hardcore could get in. Yeah. It was very grindy for for really no reason and very little payoff because yeah. the weapons weren't that much better. Well, and the I, yeah, the, the the mechanics of the game weren't great. And I don't know. I just I was very disappointed in it. I'm glad I didn't buy it. I was very close to buying it when it first came out. And I'm glad oh, I, I, even... I love the I love the original Battlefront yeah. games. The original Star Wars Battlefront games I loved a lot. Uh but well, yeah. it drove me nuts. Like, you'd get the star cards, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that they had a finite amount of uses. Mm. So I would be playing. I'd be like, well, why doesn't my jump pack work anymore? Mm. Oh, I'm out of cards. Like, what? What? <laughs> what? What the hell does yeah, that mean? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I mean, that's it? such a dumb, you know, mechanic. inconvenient mechanic. Yeah. It's like they inconvenienced you so much in this game, it, like, took the fun out of it. Well, I think maybe it was maybe it was their way of uh, of really testing your your metal. Like, you know, are you, are you, are you really going to be hardcore about this game? Are you gonna... really a stormtrooper? <laughs> like, are you really Because in the Empire, member? we really hand out cards, and you mm. have to have them to operate your equipment. Are, are you going to be a Han Solo or a, or a Jar Jar Binks? Mm. Ah. Yeah. Well, with some of the achievements were ridiculous. Like you, I didn't even realize there, there was a hero mode. Like early on, I didn't mm-hmm. realize you could play specifically as a hero. Oh, really? So I thought you had I didn't to even know that. Yeah, you can do six versus six heroes. So oh, okay. So you can actually do that, and you had to get twenty five kills as Han Solo to get this one blaster pistol, which was one of the uh, pistols from the uh, Dark Forces Two series. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, I need to get that. Like it was like a Dash Rendar. Yeah, you know, yeah, exclusive. or. or um, uh, I'm sorry. No, Dark Forces. That was Kyle Katrin. Oh, Kyle, you're right. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. My bad. It was the Briar pistol he had. A Briar, mm-hmm. Beret, or whatever. And uh, so I, you know, was like, man, it's taking forever. And then I found out about the 6v6, and I was like, ah, shit. You know, that's that sucks. So then, you know, immediately I got like 25 kills, and that was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, days wasted for nothing. Yep. Well, uh, with that, I saw a lot of um, Marvel vs. Capcom footage um i don't know like do i mean maybe it's just me but i feel like this this series might be waning you know the last the last iteration they put out was not uh very well received yeah, um that, that really like died off quick yeah well not quick i mean marvel vs. capcom has been around forever no what i'm saying though is like there it, it didn't have as much okay so like the mortal Kombat games are more yeah, the Mortal Kombat more games played. come out, and it's like a whole event, and people, Justice you know... Justice is more played. Yeah, than, oh, and Justice. Then... <laughs> Let's not get started on Justice. I'll be talking about that forever again. I freaking love that game. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, I man. I, I saw the I saw the uh, trailers for it, and they're, they're, like, they're pushing the story mode, you know, f- and instead of, like, the gameplay, which... Make, which get, uh, as soon as something like that happens with a fighting game, my ears perk up. Mm. I'm like, obviously, you know, your your engine must be trash if... You're avoiding talking about the actual, you know, fighting, and you're focused more on the story <laughs> mode. And the story mode for the game is like two and a half hours, I think they said. So, so, <laughs> well, hold on. What's what's the story? Apparently, uh, Ultron has teamed up with some other AI intelligence from Capcom that I don't know from some from some other game, you know. Mm. And I'm sure there's gonna be nubs out there like, oh, it's this, you idiot. And they've come together, and they've somehow See, gotten the a hold NES of... The NES game where that, uh, that there was an AI. And... Exactly. And apparently somehow, I guess, they've gotten a hold of the Infinity Stones, and they're just basically wreaking havoc on Capcom and Marvel Universes, you know, collectively. So, and you have to stop them. So th- this is their answer to Injustice. Which I yeah, get, the Marvel, the Marvel versus Capcom have always been there, right? I guess, except for Injustice is like, their story, their story mode's like... Probably good eight hours long. Well, but that on, also, like, I mean, the whole, I mean, the, the whole Injustice universe kind of, I think, exists in its own little thing. Yeah, it's amazing. I always kind of <laughs> felt like the Marvel versus Capcom was kind of tacked on, ham fisted together. Yeah. Like, for example, the Street Fighter EX plus Alpha Turbo. Uh, uh, Gold Star Edition, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you here's got all my, these expanded characters. Here's my take on it. I always loved the games for the gameplay. I always loved, you know, fighting those games because they were fast-paced, they were crazy, they were wild, it was interesting, you know, it was cool, right? 
there you didn't need you don't need a story mode for those games. You know, you just need to put out you know a, a, a new a new plethora game. of of characters with a really good you know fighting engine. That's it. You know, so I don't know why they're they're focused on the story mode. I don't know, but that's what they keep pushing. So that's what's going on. Um, Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah, going back to their roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gameplay footage from from that I saw looked amazing, but the Call of Duty games always look amazing as far as like well, graphics are concerned. Have they ever done a, a World War Two game? That's where Call of Duty started. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, that was the, that was their that was their niche in the beginning. Like they were almost exclusively like World War Two games. I thought I thought it was Battle Battlefield that was no Battlefield. Uh, I think wasn't Battlefield's like first game. Like uh, well, I guess there was yeah. Well, yeah, there, Battlefield started whole, off. That whole time in the in the uh, what mid mid to early two thousands, it was all it was all uh, like World War Two, World War One stuff, you know. Everybody was doing that. Everybody's doing it. Yeah, Call of Duty started. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that everybody was doing that in the beginning, though. Yeah, and then they then they changed from there. Uh, the gameplay looks, the graphics look great. Uh, the gameplay looks good, but when it's unfortunately when it's a first person shooter for me, unless I actually get my hands on it. I can't really comment about it, you know, because a lot of first person shooters just look great. They look awesome, they look good, you know, they get the screenshots at just the right, you know, angles to show this guy getting shot in the face and yada yada yada. Uh I've never seen a first person shooter uh game demo uh or uh advertisement where it didn't look cool. But there's been plenty of first person shooters that sucked, so we'll see Like Call of Horror is a cartel. Mm, there you go. I don't know what that I is. I bought it apparently. It's, uh, it's her over it's a her year over. ago mm-hmm. on a Steam sale for like you know minimal amount of money and mm-hmm. never played it. So I installed it and said, "Oh, you know what? It's Call of Juarez. You know the the old games were good. I enjoy mm-hmm. them. Bound in Blood wasn't bad, and Gunslinger was 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 passable. I enjoyed mm-hmm. Gunslinger. And uh, oh my God, this is trash. It's trash. <laughs> the, the field of view feels like you're looking through a solo cup." Oh yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's tight. It's like forty five degree viewing angle or something. It's terrible. Wow, can't see anything. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What's the point of that? Anyway, it's an example of a shitty first person shooter. So Red Dead Redemption has been pushed back. Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption Two, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. has been pushed back uh, by uh, by Rockstar. Um, honestly, though, I don't think it's a bad thing because they did the same thing. With Grand Theft Auto, and I'm not a big Grand Theft Auto fan, but the last Grand Theft Auto, they pushed it back, and it, when it came out, it was very polished, it was very, you know, sleek, you know, from where I stand, it's a fantastic game. I'm not into that, to that kind of game anymore, but, you know, people rave about that game still, so I'm hoping that the same magic gets put on Red, Dem- Red, De- Red Dead Redemption Red 2, Dem- because oh. the first one I loved so much, and actually, before that, which people forget, that, that Red Dead Redemption Revolver. was a sequel to... Red Dead Revolver, exactly, yeah. which was also a really good game. Like it was, yeah. I mean, it wasn't. Well, it was a sequel in the way of like you know the the uh, Grand Theft Auto games are sequels, right? Like, yeah, it like it's in a whole new story and stuff like that. But it was, but it was still. This isn't going to follow the story of the Sun, is it? I don't know. I don't I actually. That I, I feel bad. I haven't actually looked up the story for it because. No. Well, when it comes to a game like that, I want to be surprised. I want to know as little as, as possible. Yeah. So when I play the game, you know, it's like. Oh wow! And this is about this Ooh. person, and this is going on. And you know, I I hate spoilers when it comes to a game like that. Well, so. I uh, I had picked up a game. I don't know if you remember any of the old Tex Murphy adventure games. Oh, like way back when. Way back yeah. when, where they actually got into doing the full motion video, and the mm-hmm. head developer or the writer mm-hmm. like became Tex Murphy, and mm-hmm. it was just campy and awesome. Well, they had funded a Kickstarter a couple of years back, and they had made a new game when like. With 2K video for the full motion video, and it was like a you know modern Tex Murphy game, and I so had played it. So it. it wasn't it uh, wasn't for uh... <laughs> no no it's not for the Amiga or anything. <laughs> so I picked it up and I I'd played through it a little bit, but I didn't get into it. And recently I uh, uh, I just reinstalled it because I was like, man, you know, I needed to finish that game. It was entertaining, mm-hmm. and for some reason now I'm just like. Oh my god, I can't put it down. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> like that whole and and I, a lot of the audiobooks I'm into, I, I do like a good uh, detective story or like a noir detective yeah. story, like you know Dresden Files or um, the Peter Grant series, yeah. right? And so this I'm like totally into right now. I can't stop playing it. It's Speaking hilarious. of which, I finished the second Dresden File. Okay. The was it full uh, Foul Moon? Yeah, Full Moon, Foul Moon, it, Stinky Foul Moon. moon. Oh. Oh, Anyways, it was fantastic. Like the first book, I was eh. What'd you think of the ending? 
Oh, it was great. Oh, like, man. The book in general was just great. I, I loved it. I love the fact that Dresden, from what I've only, I've only read two books so far, but this is the kind of cat who, I, I think I mentioned this, mentioned this to you before, he is like the Bruce Willis of, of wizards. Yeah. <laughs> like, he gets the, he gets the living shit kicked out of him the entire story, mm-hmm. and then pulls it off in the end. He pulls the gun off his back, you know. Well, and not only that, but out. there are times where he just kind of goes into, well, I'm going to die, so I got nothing to lose, and... Yeah. Eh, let's just burn the whole place down. And and at the at the end, if I remember correctly, he uh, amps up his fire spell and completely like uh, immolates all the vampires. And no, I'm not. No, this was this was about the werewolves I was reading. This wasn't the was that the first one? No, the first one had a vampire in it, but it, no, it was the first one was about oh. a, a mad uh, a mad wizard uh, apprentice, basically, who was like losing his shit and. Uh, but just you know, weird things like that. This one was about werewolves, like four different kinds of, or three different kinds of werewolves. Ignore what I said. Yep, because now you're totally screwed in the next book, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't remember him setting everything on fire. Forget it. It's a really <laughs> cool scene. Well, we're gonna move along then because I don't want you to ruin any more of the books for me. <laughs> um, let's see, Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, it's a great nature documentary. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be great. How many of these games are they going to make? I'm sorry, like <laughs> I just—it's turning into the Fast and Furious of Assassin games. Exactly. Like... Meanwhile, okay, so as we talk about the superior, like technically superior series failing, mm-hmm. look at Hitman. Hitman has always provided that just top tier level of assassination fun. Yeah. And uh, what? Just the the relaunch of it as quote unquote Hitman. I thought. Albeit, I hate episodic gaming because when something like this happens, like the company going under, mm-hmm. because they tried to do episodic gaming, yeah, uh, you you don't get to finish it. So I was excited for season two of the of the episodes mm-hmm. to be released. Excuse me, but apparently, Eidos Montreal or whichever one of the companies, their assets are now getting sold off, and who knows? Yeah. You know, who knows what's going to happen with Hitman? I thought EA swallowed up most of that stuff, anyways. They did, okay. they did, but EA is a, a trash company, and yeah, and, and they make trash games. Typically. They make trash yeah. sports games, and I'm sure many people enjoy their sports games. And and I'm um, hey, if you find I'm not listen, I'm not knocking you, man. Listen, but, Madden 2017 was totally different from Madden 2016. I mean, there's you know complete. Oh, changes I'm sorry, from, the roster yeah. for the players were updated. <laughs> wow, that's worth. One hundred and twenty dollars for then. Don't forget the thirty dollars for the DLC in the the next episode. Let me just watch. Let me just say something about that. John real quick. Madden it, stuff his what, face with chips. What cracks me up about that is the simple fact that they won't make any big changes in those games for like a few. Like they'll make one big change. Remember the hit stick came out. The hit stick change. The hit stick is all about the hit stick. Like you had to, you know, when you're about to run into somebody, you had to. Push up on the uh, on the right or left or maybe both sticks. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know what and, you're talking and, about. and it did like some kind of spear thing or something like that. And that was like the big thing. I'm like, really? Like that's the big change that we're that we're going like with? Like all the guys talking... on the forums. That's all they. We need a hit stick. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's <laughs> and the EA, and EA, EA answered the call. <laughs> like the forums are just getting blown up with it. Hey, I just can't do those games, man. Like I used to. I used to love playing like a Madden game every now and again. But that's one of those things where I hate watching football. So you would think that I would prefer, like, an interactive sports game. Mm-hmm. But I am just as bored, if not more, with a sports game because I still have no... To this day, I've played football. Mm-hmm. I'll, I had no goddamn clue what I was doing. Oh, see. See, I would get up there, and they said, tackle that guy. And I would... No matter what went on, I just would go and I would tackle that guy. Mm-hmm. Like, See, I loved playing Madden on, on Genesis, and then I was introduced to a game called Blood Bowl, and I never touched Madden again after that for a while because Blood Bowl was a fantasy version of yeah, but wasn't it like Madden fun? It was extremely fun. That's what I'm saying. Like I, say, I played, I was like, and, and I really don't understand why that one doesn't have like a Blood Bowl 2017 or you know <laughs> change well, up the roster. And... That is also isn't that like Shadowrun universe or the Warhammer universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's actually a tabletop uh, RPG game. You know? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. you. Uh, there's actually at uh, Famous Faces and Funnies and Get Your Fun On, the Get Your Fun On part, obviously. Yeah. They actually run a, bl- a Blood Bowl League. So anybody that's listening that wants to join a Blood Bowl League, they they run one. If you go up there and ask the owner Mark about it, he could probably hook you up with the person who runs it. I think the guy who's runs it, who runs it, his, well, I know the guy who runs it, his name is Josh. He's a friend of mine. But I don't know when they do it. I feel bad. because Somebody's I, listening right now and they're like, like oh, oh my, my God, God, they're writing all this down. Like, oh my what, God. what is this place called? <laughs> get your get your fun on? Get your funions on? What the fuck? I didn't know this place. Oh my God, I'm going there now. 
But anyways, like that, like when I when I think back to that game now, that's what came to my mind when I heard people talking about fantasy football for the first time. I was like, wait a minute, you mean like like Blood Bowl? Like there's gonna be like you could have like elves and <laughs> and ogres and stuff. Like you have a you have a team of of uh, of halflings and you recruit that one elf to be your quarterback and he stands like six feet over your you know three and a half foot characters. Well, are, there any, are there any goblins? Because if there are, I want to cuddle. That's what I'm saying. I want a whole group of goblins. Oh, we'll, get, we'll come back to that. Snuggle we'll the goblins. Come back to your goblin session. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Assassin's Creed Origins. I guess <laughs> it takes place in Egypt now. It's gonna like I guess that's where where the whole thing started because you know how the Templars were involved in Egypt. Oh, so, absolutely. You know, you know, know, they were all up in there. During the, <laughs> so during the I don't Egyptian. know where they're gonna go with that whole well, thing. Wait, so they, I guess the assassins have been around longer than the Templars is what they're trying to say, basically, right? Well, the assassins were their own thing, though. Yeah, but they're like arch nemeses in the games were the Templars. Yeah. So now they're in Egypt. They start in Egypt. Well, there's no Templars in in the Egyptian. Well, maybe the see. Here's the thing. In, uh, full disclosure. I I think I played like half of the first game. Oh, see, full disclosure. I've only played like three of the games, but I kind of know the oh. storyline, you know. Yeah, I, so, and there's only one that I enjoyed, and that was Black Flag because of the pirates thing with the ships and stuff like that. That was actually awesome. And it's actually the same team that did Black Flag mm. that's doing Assassin's Creed Origins to to bring them back after their crappy debut with their last couple of games. Or the Are last... they all? Do they all take place with this shtick where you're, you're... In the an- an- animus, the animus. Or, yeah, yeah. There's, or, but it's there's, all there's none of them that are like straight legit, like your contemporary. I don't know. Maybe player. maybe origins. Because I, I thought don't know. there was one of them. I thought the where you were the twins. I thought there was a couple. Man, of them. I have no idea. I really don't. They just kind of broke not, away from that. Like well, we're just gonna take out that game mechanic because it's I think too expensive. I think we may have discussed this before, but if not, I'm not a huge fan. Of the of the sneaking assassin games, you know, oh. because I tend to like do like the sneaky mission here, and you do that, and the, and they see, you know, I just want to go, I just get tired of it, and I just want to go balls to the wall, have a shootout, but those games aren't set up for that, so you get completely annihilated. <laughs> Case in point, uh, I used to, I love the Metal Gear Solid games, but I never finished them because oh. of the simple fact that when you're doing the sneaking around thing, like, it's fun for a while, but then I just want to run out with my little handgun and shoot people to death. And Well, that's how I started off. Like, I'll branch out a little bit. Yeah. In my in my Fallout 4 saga, mm-hmm. I, I showed you my vault, right? Yeah. I think I showed you my vault at mm-hmm. one point. Well, I had recalled that I never played Nuka-Cola, the DLC, so I'm mm-hmm. like, well, fuck, i got to branch away from the vault DLC because this is time-consuming. Yeah. So I am started, started doing the Nuka-Cola. And normally I'm kind of like, I like to sneak, I like to, I have a uh, musket I crank from the distance, and mm-hmm. you crank it six times, and sneak critical hit, and you, bl- you know, obliterate any character in the game. Yeah. And this one I'm like, well, no, I'm just, yeah, okay, I've got my bleeding shotgun, you know, it causes bleeding damage, and yeah. I got my power armor, and I'm just wading out into the middle of everybody, and just, boo, 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 <laughs> boo, boo, oh, I'm in a walking tank, yep, okay. <laughs> I'm just. I'm not going to be stealthy this run. This is not. See what's funny is with those games, I I make myself stealthy, but then all my stuff, all my stuff is like for attack is usually like ridiculously explosive <laughs> and stuff. So it's like I sneak in, I get past all the guards and stuff, and then I wreak havoc, you know, on myself because then I then I then it's like a, a survival mode to see how long I can go before everyone has come to kill me, you know? Like, well, that, was, that was one thing I wanted to ask you, too, like, mm-hmm. for future, uh, well, a little behind-the-scenes talk, mm-hmm. like, for future episodes, like, actually, like, doing doing some type of gameplay while we record. Absolutely, I would love to do that. Because, like, you know, we've got fucking Steam, you know, and yeah. literally my, I have a massive dumb library of games. Yeah, but it should be, like, a playthrough, like, a goofy game, like a, like a, what was it, Monkey oh, Skull sure. Island kind of thing or something, sure. you know, like... Like I don't want to sit here. I want to sit here talking to people while you're playing. You know, like Overwatch, <laughs> like grinding, playing. No, no. I mean something that actually has a a you know getting to point A to point B. Yeah. You know, something that has a bit of a story. We could or... probably do like a video too, like just. Well, like that's a, what I'm saying. I like can a Twitch it. kind of thing, you know. Yeah, I can record it and. Yeah. You know, because I got, yeah. I got a bit of RAM. So. Yeah, shame. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, anyways, Assassin's Creed Origins. You know, that's I don't know. Destiny Two is coming out. I'm uh, soon. I gotta play Destiny before Destiny Two comes. No, out. you don't have to. It's, it's like it's like we talked about before. It's Diablo with guns, you know. It's, yeah, uh, it's the quest for better pants. Exactly. And honestly, it's really fun at first, and then I get really bored of it after a while because I'm not really a huge dungeon crawler fan. Mm. Like Diablo, you know, I played through the whole game with one character, 
and then I was done. You know, like I know a lot of people play through like multiple characters, I got, I got multiple two passes level, level through. seventy wizards. Yeah, see. I had to have a female. You know. Yeah, you can't have just you. Know. Yeah. Although I was like that before, like back in the day for some reason. But you know, it was is because I was on, and maybe it's my own fault because I don't get online with a bunch of people. I need to start doing that again. I need to start playing with people, but I don't yeah. have the time to set up. Like, hey, you're gonna be home. You know, I'm gonna be blah blah. But back in the day when when I was playing Diablo two. Uh, me and everybody I worked with at, at, at this uh, restaurant, we all played Diablo 2. So we would all get off work, go home, about half an hour to an hour after you know we got home, everybody's on, and we're off, you know, just messing up cows and, you know, just doing until all kinds they, of things. Until they nerf your character build and don't allow you to respect. No, we're and... not going back to that. We're not going back to your, to your nightmarish hellscape. Well, of, at least it know. won't take me six years to level my... Fucking necromancer back up. I'm already <laughs> level like twelve. Well, the best part is you can also you can now you can change things on the go. Like oh yeah. You know, oh, I don't like this setup. Let me try this. So, yeah. which is pretty cool. Well, and also too, you got uh, the armory now. Yeah. Which the whole reason I built a second wizard was so that I wouldn't have to go through and do everything over with my primary. I could yeah. experiment with the second wizard. Mm -hmm. And now that's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fuck. All right. Well. Oh, experimentation with his wizard. Well, let's. Do you want to? Do you want to segue into that? The, yeah, let's go. The necro dancer, right into it. Right into today, <laughs> I'm your necro dancer, dancing for. I gotta get that game. Skeletons. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, on a side note. Yeah, tell called... me about this game. Okay, so so uh, I was talking to Joe. Oh. Oh God. Oh. Beep. <laughs> I was talking to Felton on my way in, and uh, we were talking about uh, he's playing the the necromancer for uh diablo and then i guess there's a game called necro Whoa. dancer probably just made everybody deaf but there you go yeah but yeah the whole point behind it is uh god so you, the rhythm plays are right? you playing music or something for it Cause yeah I, yeah okay, there's, I there's, hear in my there's music okay. that plays in the background mm -hmm. And it coins itself as a rhythm rhythm dungeon crawler. Okay. So you move and fight to the beat of the music. That's actually kind of cool. And, it, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I've listened to the soundtrack on YouTube. Mm -hmm. the, the music is rad. <laughs> like, I just want to play it to listen to the music. I guess the whole point is you're your group of siblings and you got to rescue your father or something from the, uh, the necro dancer. Oh, okay. And on a side note, I, I want to play it just strictly so I can make the Necro Dancer as a cosplay. Yes. <laughs> just like that would be fun. Yes. To, just to walk around the cons dancing. Walk into the, walk into the beat. Wow, I'm sitting here watching the uh, the gameplay for this. The, this Necro Dancer has a lot of friends. Like, he must be hip because there's like a dragon, there's some ghosts. There's, Ogres. I mean, he's... There's a know, the werewolves. Yeah, he's a rad <laughs> dude. So that's what I had to... Uh, that's what I named my Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. character the necro dancer nice so you know figured why not and and it's so funny too because when he's casting his spells he's like launching his arms out and doing this stuff <laughs> so it looks like he's doing some type of techno dancing so nice. i thought this is great this worked out perfectly i think the only thing that would make it better is i mean i'm sure you've seen the video of all those goth kids like dancing to like yeah. uh, <laughs> so if the necro if the necro dancer actually danced like that i would be that would be just phenomenal yeah he does all right so Tell us your uh, adventures in Diablo Land now as a necromancer. Well, uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, like with you know everything else, it it just to me. I mean, sure, it's the the new facelift, the new character. Mm -hmm. But if you really get to the core of what Diablo is, it's the same abilities, just repackaged and repurposed in a different way. Yeah. I mean, I know people would probably argue with me with the subtleties of oh, well, the monk is completely different than the wizard, or you know, whatever. It's like okay, you're you're right, but this spell does X amount of damage over mm -hmm. this amount of time. That's what these ten other abilities do. You yeah. know, I mean, it just it has a different graphic, dude. Oh, are you kidding me? The whole I played I played through the whole uh, the whole game uh, with the with the hunter. I think it is. You know, demon hunter. Yeah, and honestly, like I don't even know what what my abilities were half the time because you're right. Yeah. It's just it's just like okay, this does this, this does this. Yeah. Until you get to the very end, and until you get equipment, and until you actually mm -hmm. get that like because basically, in my experience, what it all boils down to figuring out what your skills and equipment do to boost one attack really, really good. Yeah. So that you can keep up with the. Difficulty level. Yeah. For my wizard, for example, I can do millions and millions of damage uh, with um, 
uh, energy orb, mm-hmm. you know, a- energy orbit, and that's all I do. I cast an energy or the uh, the slow time bubble, mm-hmm. and anything within that bubble takes a ridiculous amount of damage from my, uh, you know, my uh, arcane orb. Uh, uh, oh, I forget what the name of the damn spell is. It's the only one I use now. I get the I get the feeling that some people might be listening to this like seething though. They're just like Diablo's amazing. Why? We're not knocking Diablo. Why are I you love... using that ability? <laughs> it's the lamest one. Well, here's the thing. I cast it once, and then it hits four times. Yeah. So my my second ability is the armor, where my resources are above ninety percent. Mm-hmm. I take fifty percent less damage or mm-hmm. something. So it's an insane damage reduction. Mm-hmm. Or uh, yeah, yeah, fifty percent. So you know all that stuff stacking together that makes your character super uber powerful. Yeah. But that's really like you got to sit there and grind. I mean, God, I didn't want to look. Well, that's how many the whole. That's the whole point. Of, that's the whole point of those games that you grind. You know, like a lot of times. Uh, when I used to play Diablo, and I'll probably go back and play play through again with a different character because I do want to try some of the other characters. I just got you know a lot of things going on in my life right All now. All life, and, exactly. Yeah. That's the bad part about being an adult, right? But um, sucks. But like I, when I used to go through a, like a lot of playthroughs and stuff like that, I already knew I already knew what they were ta- talking about with the dialogue and everything. I turn the turn the sound off, <laughs> like turn on like a podcast or music, like music or something. something. Yeah, and just you know grind, <laughs> grind, grind, grind. That's like Killing Floor 2, I feel like that's kind of what I do, is I just put on the music and level up, because that's the only purpose behind the game. But even then, Killing Floor 2, immensely popular, very simple game mechanic. Mm-hmm. You shoot the clones in the head. Yeah. And then look at other games, like, you know, again, I keep I keep ripping on, uh, I keep ripping on Battleborn, but, <laughs> you know, don't try to do too much. Yeah. Look at Duke Nukem Forever. That took oh my God. literally forever to come out. Mm-hmm. And you had this really shittily done, not packaged very well, very rail-based style shooter. Mm-hmm. I mean, that game literally could have been an Area 51 type of game. Yeah, like at an arcade or something. <laughs> you you get presented with shooting galleries. Mm-hmm. You hide behind this thing, and all the enemies pop out, and you're locked in this one area, and you go to shoot them. It's yeah. like they they thought, well, maybe we can use the PlayStation Move or you know <laughs> ooh, future you know thoughts, and it just you know nothing lined up. I mean, I have no idea why they made that game that way. I don't even. I didn't terrible. even play it. it. Just I'm not a huge. I I liked Duke Nukem when I was a kid when it was all dick and fart jokes, and I was those were the funniest things in the don't world. Don't have me, time but... to play with myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he <laughs> he made a peepee joke. <laughs> exactly, but now I'm like, eh, not so much. Eight bit titties. Woo. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Oh my god. My god. So, um, oh, real quick. Uh, looks like October sixth is what we're looking for for our uh, I think that's Nerd United saying. and Brevard meetup. Uh, we'll keep you guys posted as it gets closer. Anybody out there that's listening that you know has any kind of hookups for like uh, pizza or you know donuts or anything interesting like that let us know you know because you know we want to try to make this a great event for everybody there uh, basically you know great event for nerds in general we want people to pay you know as little as possible like it's going to be free to get in we're going to try to provide i mean we are going to provide free food even if i have to you know come out my my pocket for everything you know we're going to provide free food there's going to be discounts for both the game store and the comic book store um you know, there's gonna be all kinds of door prizes and stuff like that. There might be a couple things here and there that if you want to participate in, you'll you'll have to pay for. Like I know uh, I was uh, thinking about um, the shop owner for Get Your Fun On. His daughter teaches how to uh, how to paint minis. So if you were to do like a minis thing, you would obviously have to pay. For, you'd have to pay for like a kit, you know, to learn how to paint minis. But Basically, most things I'm going to try and make as as free as possible for everybody there, so everybody can just go there, bring your kids, bring your family, your friends, and just have a good time. Just be a nerd, enjoy being a nerd. So in Brevard, in Brevard, exactly. You're going to have a lot of like trivia, and you know, we'll be podcasting from there. Uh, just all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, hopefully, like basically an all day event. So. Maybe like you know, a week or two after I, the the episode will be uploaded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be two years from after it, but you know. <laughs> Anyways, like um, so. You had your first D and D experience in a long time this uh, oh, last yeah. Thursday. Yep, yep, yep. So what are you, what was your uh, what was your take from that? Would you? That's pretty fun. Yeah, I, I liked the. Um, I, I mean, excluding th- that Foxtail took forever to get there, so we started oh, yes, extremely yes. late. <laughs> yeah, I, at the one point I was just kind of sitting to myself and going, "Man, I know my character sheet's like you know kind of cobbled together, but mm-hmm. what are we waiting for?" And then it says, <laughs> "Oh, shit, yep." Oh, I forgot about that. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, it's interesting. Like it's it's a, a a lot more freedom because you can make decisions and you know that, that I mean you can do it. You know, obviously it's yeah. not like a, a, another type of board game or a PC game. You know, you have complete freedom to you know pee on a fire to put it out or exactly or, you know try or to cuddle a goblin the, or, or shoot the bugbear in the groin or like, shoot yeah. the bugbear in the dick like just <laughs> boom these are all things by the way that happened during our game <laughs> um uh, well that's great uh, that's one of the things i tell my players you know as as the dm i get i my enjoyment comes from you guys coming up with interesting weird ways to solve the problems that i put before you uh. you know I'm not huge on uh, the the fighting rules and things like that. You know, I'm not a oh. I'm not a big fan of being very strict and stringent to that kind of thing because I feel like sometimes it um, uh, uh, really restricts the player from mm. doing what they want to do or coming up with something interesting and cool. That's why eventually I want to move to. Uh, there's a couple of different um, uh, RPG uh, tabletop uh, mechanics I've been looking at uh, that are a lot simpler as far as like. You say you want to do this, you roll like three dice, and depending on what those dice come out with, that's you know what if if you're if you're able to do it or not. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, it becomes a little more complicated when you're doing like a fantasy setting because there's got to be some kind of rules to to the magic and things like that involved. But just I find it sometimes uh, puts a weight on the player if they're like, oh, okay, well, I have to do this, but I have to go through this and this and this, and it kind of restricts their I imagination. To, I have to build this potion, and I have to follow these specific rules. And... Yeah, well, that's the th- I, I, I'm not big on that either. I know that some and people that get into that, by all means, I'm glad they get into that, but because th- with a wizard, for instance, you know, you're supposed to have, like, uh, special ingredients and, you know, do signs and, and you know, have like something that you Witcher, say, and, and you can you can make all that stuff up. That's That's the whole fun of it. But my thing is, I mean, I don't want my players to be so bogged down with all that kind of stuff. Like, oh, crap, do I have enough Wolfsbane to, to cast this spell, to do this, to do that? I want you to enjoy the story. I want you to have a good time playing the game. I want everybody to laugh. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, you know, I've I've made players, you know, tear up. Like, you know, we've gone into, like, I'm, I'm serious. Like, you know, we've lost, you know, members of the party or something like that. And, it's yeah. you know, it's been, you know. It's been a tragic thing. So I was really sad when my goblin friend died. I really wanted to call him. <laughs> so Felton's character is obsessed with uh with goblins, I guess. Like they, I decided, they, they I want they want to be that, your pets or something. Yeah, right? I decided that he pets. had a pet goblin that he raised because you know his his story's a little dark. His background, like he was, you know, kind of raised. Why don't you by uh, a, Why don't you give us the the, the rundown of your character? Well, basically, uh, the, I I kind of start uh-huh. like with his little with his little story that I wrote up in the course of forty five minutes before the. Uh, before going to four paragraphs long, that's like it's like eight pages. No. <laughs> but uh, it's a just, mini. It's a it's a novella. <laughs> yeah, it's a little novella. You know, I feel like H.P. Lovecraft. Um, but yeah, he's like he's a he's a half orc. You know, he's a half human. The right? Call of Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, the Call of Mitchell. Um, his name's Mitchell because uh, I, I you know based his likeness upon Joe Don Baker, the actor. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful film, Mitchell. Um, but yeah, his uh, mother was the wife of a merchant. The uh, merchant kind of, you know, was like, hey, you know, she's getting old. I'm rich. You know, hey, uh, honey, go go into town. I got to have you fetch these uh, heirlooms. You know, uh, the uh, the city isn't so safe anymore. So we're gonna we're gonna bring it back here to our to our, you know, our our, our home in the in the countryside. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it turns out that uh, he hired a, a gang of orcs to uh, attack her and her personal guard. And uh, we find out through there. That uh, the orcs kill her her uh, guard, and while they're where they're doing, he says, "Oh, you know, thank your boss for for the money and you know whatever." So she realizes that he set her up. So she survives the attack, and uh, a few months later, ends up uh, giving birth to a, uh, a half a half human. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine what happened, you know, during <laughs> during the attack, and she survived it. There was a stork, right? Like a yeah, a stork <laughs> delivered it to her. So she finds a safety in a neighboring town, raises him in seclusion, and uh, uh, basically from there, you know, she realizes this, you know, you can't keep hiding him, but, mm-hmm. you know, obviously we find out later on that the people in the town kind of knew, but they just didn't say anything. Yeah. So, you know, dad eventually, or rather her, her husband eventually finds out that uh, she's still alive and in, in fear of her, you know, coming back to try and take his empire or get revenge. Mm-hmm. He uh, sends some of his goons to, to have her killed, and they succeed. So, 
Mitchell finds out, kind of gives into that old old bloodlust. He's 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 been off learning to be a ranger, by the way, because mm-hmm. you know she figured she had some contacts. Figured, oh, you know, the local ranger community. Local ranger community will take care of him. They'll, well, it's like it, it's like the the police have the the explorers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Are, they're gonna see he was a ranger explorer. A, yeah. <laughs> so he goes off. He's got, learns, he's got a little. He's got a little he's sticker, got a little sticker badge. ranger badge. <laughs> so his, he little goes plastic, off. his little plastic uh, bow with the little like, search and <laughs> little cup arrows. Cup arrows. <laughs> so he goes off, becomes a, becomes a ranger, hears about his mother, and uh, goes back to you know his, his hometown where his mother, mother lived. Well, it turns out uh, he was, uh, his, his mother and father ran a slaver town. And uh, you know, that's why she always kept a, a little goblin as a pet for him. You know, she basically beat the thing into submission to to act like a like a pet. So he he doesn't understand that that goblins are the somewhat, goblins are, are people somewhat too. somewhat sentient and mm-hmm. and uh, you know so he you know immediately like oh hoo, hoo, hey there little guy and I'll try and cuddle him. I thought that would be like a cool character flaw. Like he just he doesn't understand. And uh, so yeah, he he completely uh, destroys the town, kills mm-hmm. his kills his. Not, I guess he's nothing to him. Yeah, like kills, kills the man that kills the man that, killed, that was that married to his mother that, that and had his mom killed, and uh, well, he also ended up killing his father too. I think I somewhat put that in there. Oh, okay. Because some, you know, alluded to there was an orc that had a uh, that was terrorizing the skin town. He had the eerily the same colored, you know, color skin or so whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm a pretty good writer. Basically, is what I'm getting into. What is that in the little? Up there, if you want me asking, what? what was that in the uh, plastic container? Container, what is that? Oh, oh, so Lucky's Market. If you guys uh-huh. haven't been to Lucky's Market, a 192 is pretty freaking sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, they make knockoff products, and it's just their version of Swedish fish. Can I have it? Yeah, oh, I'm gonna eat I the... hope these are glue dots and I'm not gonna... gross boogers. Yeah, that would be disgusting. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, gonna eat this, uh, this uh, Swedish fish live. I'm telling you what, right there, uh, way better than the package one you get. Wow, it is really good. Yeah, like wow. they're soft and tender. And That's the best Swedish fish I've ever had. I know, right? The, I bought that like two days ago, and it's already gone. So I kind of a little bit, a bit over sugared right now. <laughs> so tell them your, the other flaw about your character. His stance on orcs. Oh, so he's savagely racist toward orcs, <laughs> and he is in fact a half orc. Mm-hmm. So he will go out of his way to identify as you know human or, or half human and uh, will completely just bulldoze over the fact that he is a giant hulking gray skinned yellow eyed monstrosity half orc yeah you know which is already with you a know, strange with a strange like crew cut looking thing going on <laughs> yeah so he's kind of you know got this got this whole uh, not crew cut bowl cut yeah right well i mean i don't know he's kind of got long hair underneath the hood mm. you can't really see it I was just going by the picture you showed me before. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, all it is is Joe Don Baker with the exactly. skin Photoshop gray. But uh, yeah, so he, those, that's going to pose for some interesting, interesting dialogue. Mm-hmm. You know, some would say that I'm half human. <laughs> Others would say that I'm all human. <laughs> Others would say that I'm all human. That, that's, that's what they would say, right? <laughs> like, you know. So so far in our adventure, uh, the 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 group got a uh, invitation. Like every hook, or not every hook, but like a lot of hooks in D and D, you know, you guys got a mm. uh, invitation to come, you know, to a to a port to get on a ship to come to go to a new land to uh, help out an organization that needs help. Uh, they're called they're called the Holy Remnants, and they're looking to recruit you guys. And so you all meet at the port, and when you get there, there's a little scuffle going on with oh. a with a group of extremely dangerous uh, uh, gang members that call themselves uh, the, rats? Su- the Sea Rats. <laughs> the Sea Rats. The Sea Rats. Me. Basically, just you know, some goofy gang that thinks that they run the the port that you guys are in, and they're trying to shake down the captain of the boat that you guys are going to be getting on. So, of course, you guys get involved non-violently, though, mind you, which I thought was interesting. You guys chose the route to to more or less like. Uh well let me explain the party to you so we've got the we've got a half orc who's relatively large character oh. then we have two dragonborn characters who are both bigger two, than me and one of them is actually large for like his whole stick is he's actually large for a dragonborn so he's just humongous you know and he's full black like dark black you know black black onyx black and then there's a, a small uh dark elf 
characters. So most of the characters in our, all the characters in our party would kind of be considered like, you know, evil kind of characters or like monstrosity characters. So that's going to play interestingly into the game. But, you know, our, our ginormous dragonborn go up to the leader of this gang that are causing a problem and pretty much <laughs> throw him in the water and they're like, we're like, done okay, with cool this. Off. Like, yeah, just relax. And everything just kind of comes down from there you guys are able to get on the boat so well, i kind of my, my whole thought process in jumping in the water mm -hmm. and and being like hey you know i got my passport well i almost first saw i almost got shot by a blunderbuss yeah i'm like oh hey no no i got the passport oh yeah. okay <laughs> so i get up there and then i'm like oh but you know oh wait you know there's a goblin there so i kind of create the distraction by trying to cuddle the goblin <laughs> and that kind of spark you know kicked everything off like, yeah the goblin did did uh cut you so. oh yeah he stabbed me right? he ran off though. goblin goblins don't play that shit <laughs> <laughs> apparently they don't want to be cuddled they don't like I will, being cuddled. i will cuddle a goblin it'll probably happen eventually roll for initiative <laughs> yes yes i cuddled the goblin <laughs> i cuddled the goblin he can't get away from my and, you a, and you rolled it and you rolled it a 20 so you cuddle, <laughs> you cuddle the goblin to death <laughs> oh no well, that was another thing too. One of his things is he's always picking things up, fidgeting with them, and breaking them. So, oh, so I, I kind of wanted that. to we have gotten there yet. So. I kind of wanted to have this whole like uh, uh, of mice and men thing where mm. like he is a badass ranger. You know, he's got like good detective skills, mm -hmm. but at that same time, you know, where he, did he go, George? Where did he go? He could be a moron at times, and that's going to be like one of those things where. He will be my pet, and I will love him and pet <laughs> him forever and ever. Because he just, he doesn't understand. Tell that. me about the rabbits, George. <laughs> about the, we're gonna live off the fat of the land. <laughs> uh, John Malkovich, my God, they made him look gigantic in that movie. Yeah, they did, right? They had to have used a body double in some scenes. He's on stilts or something, probably. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with a painter with stilts, a, the big giant overall giant suit, and on top of that, I mean they they. The actor they got to play with him. Who's the other actor? Gary Sinise. Oh, Gary Sinise. Yeah, Gary Sinise they is about average look, height. Yeah, they made him not... look tiny, though. Yeah. They well, really the... did a phenomenal well, if you job. Ever saw... Did you ever see the original Mice and Men movie? Like, I mean, the guy in that is ginormous. And the other guy... the like an the... old, old movie, though, Yeah, it's it? a black and white, I think. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, just in color. But, yeah. The other guy in it's, like, really small, so... And that's from the book. I mean, the book was like that, so... Mm. But... Isn't that based off of Robert Burns' poem? That was a full book. It's a full book. Of Mice and Men? It's a full book. Yeah, but I thought the title was based off the Robert Burns. Oh, movie. that I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. I mean, that's just, you know, way out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't so like old English. So I was enjoying. It. I can't wait to see where this where this goes though. You know, you guys are on the you guys are on the boat now. You guys are sailing. You guys got attacked by some some goblins out of nowhere, you know, Which goblins. I totally I got to admit, you know, I'm not even tooting my own horn here. I I completely saved the day there. I mean, I, you did you did come out in your first I, your first move, you murdered a you <laughs> murdered death face to a goblin and chopped another one in 3. Yep. Not, not in half, in yeah, 3. In three yeah. And then like when slices uh, of bread. Foxtail set the boat on fire, since I just woke <laughs> up, I thought, oh, yeah. well, I got to take a so, giant orc. Hold on, piss. we got we got to explain this so so, uh, so Foxtail's character cast her firebolt, and she completely missed. I mean, I think she rolled like a two or something like that, you know. So, whenever my whenever my players do really bad on a roll, I usually have repercussions for it, you know. So she shoots the fireball at this giant bugbear that's on the that's on the you know that's on the ship, misses the bugbear, and sets the <laughs> and sets the ship on fire. Like starts like a, I mean, it's just a, the the five by five square that started on fire. But as time went on, I was going to spread the fire, you know, each turn. But uh, yeah, your character wakes up. So your character was behind a a, um, a turn to begin with because your character was down below deck sleeping when this when this all. Well, took I had place, to recover so. from getting pig stuck by a goddamn goblin and tried to cuddle, <laughs> so I had to recover that HP. Yeah. So go ahead. So you you. So I wake up from my nap and I and I'm I'm just you know thinking, man, what's the first thing I do every morning when I wake up? I got to take a giant piss. I mm -hmm. said this guy's nearly seven feet tall. He probably he has to take a humongous wart, half wart piss. Yeah. He's several hundred pounds. Well, half human piss. Half yeah. human piss, right? <laughs> several hundred pound half human. So I get up, sneak up behind a goblin, scissor his head off, and then uh, cut the other one in two. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I'm right there next to the fire, so I'm like, well, I'm assuming this guy's got, you know, a ginormous bladder. Mm -hmm. So let's just piss on it. Let's just piss on the fire to put it out. And I thought this is going to be like one of those, like misty fire hose pisses. <laughs> anyway, because he's got he's giant right yeah it's like he's, he's so yeah it worked out it worked out but i was really hoping you roll i was really hoping you do a crit because i was just gonna be like you you know you piss a hole through the boat or something <laughs> like just 
<laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I was hoping for something like that, but that didn't happen. So <laughs> you, you start you start having uh, you, your inner ability awakens and you start acid peeing. Oh god! <laughs> you aim it at the bugbear. <laughs> And then later, your character shot the bugbear in the groin with an arrow. <laughs> yeah, like everybody just have the the uh, <laughs> the crew was having better luck. <laughs> this always the enemies. this always happens though. I don't know why. <laughs> like I don't set my AC any higher than the book says. You know, uh, AC is the uh, armor class for those who don't play D and D. It's it, basically it's what you have to reach when you roll your D twenty with your bonuses. You have to reach that or higher in order to hit another character. You know. I don't set any of my ACs higher than the book does. You know, a lot of times I actually set it lower. But, you know, my 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 friends just suck at rolling dice. Like, they just really <laughs> suck at rolling dice. So, so they're, they're like, they're getting really... Round after getting round just hands. missing shit. Like, yeah, it was like, they're oh getting their God. asses handed to them. We lost, like, a bunch of crew members. Yeah. And I finally get into the mix, and I'm like... Well, I'm gonna shoot him in the dick. <laughs> like this one guy's an member, asshole. One, that one female crew member got like obliterated. Like, oh she yeah. Got, you know, so there, there's a giant bugbear on the boat, and he's got a huge club, a huge spike club, and he and a big uh, shield with claws on it. He's you know wrecking shit. And there's a, a crew member who was close to him, and she was able to hit him, and she got him like under the jaw with a uh, with like a little like hook that they use on boats to like grab like rope and things like that. And, mm. And she gets him under the jaw with that, and it pissed the bugbear off so bad that when it, when when he hit her, because this bugbear got two attacks, so when he hit her, he hit her first with a shield and, like, you know, broke her back almost, you know? Or I guess they did, by the way I described it. And then came across with the with the, uh, with the the mace, like, right across her head and sent her flying off the damn boat, you know? Like, he was uh, he was not happy with her. Mm, he wasn't happy with me either. I shot him in the dick, and he yeah, started he definitely, to charge at me. Yeah, well, he, he actually, uh, he... Uh, was intimidated by you though after you shot him in the dick too. So let's just fight. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the other. Oh yes. <laughs> he so kept the bug... getting feared by the. The bugbear bug kept intimidating the largest member of our group, which is a <laughs> giant, uh, uh, black, um, uh, Dragon dragonborn Lord. paladin. <laughs> like, you know, he kept losing to the. He kept uh, my buddy who was playing the uh, the dragonborn paladin kept losing his uh, his his checks to the. Bugbear for intimidation. <laughs> the bugbear kept intimidating the hell out of him. Well, now we know the best way to intimidate a bugbear is to shoot it in the genitals with an arrow. Yeah, that, that usually works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a good time, though, and I can't wait for the next game. You know, We didn't get as far as I wanted, but like I said, we started late, so we'll finish up the stuff that I had planned originally for us, and then we'll you know get into some new stuff. So Yeah, i got to finish doing up, because there was a lot of times where I had to like start flipping through the book, like, oh, God, what yeah, do I... And that, <laughs> And that changes as you play, you know, as you keep playing, you'll, you, a lot of that stuff you'll just remember, you know, you'll remember. Well, I, gotta, I think I just got to go online, because I think I fucked up my uh, character sheet to begin with, with the map well, There's plenty or of YouTube videos and stuff, too, you can watch about it, you know, that'll show you there, how to set your character There's a character sheet builders stuff. where you can enter in your, your numbers, I, something like... Well, I don't want to pay for it right now, but if, if everybody in the group would be, would be down with it, um, for like, it's like, a, I don't remember, it's really cheap, I think it was like 50 bucks for the year, um... Each year or whatever, uh, the Wizards of the Coast, who you know own D and D now, mm. um, they have a website that you can go there, and it's got you know the whole character creator thing there, and and you can update your characters and stuff there too. And we all just would share the same account, and you, you know, when you level your character up, all you do is you level the character up, and it tells you what you can do from there. Like pick this, pick that. Well, you this kind of does that, but it's free. Oh, okay. Well, but does it work? Because a lot of those things are really buggy. So let me know if it works, right. and we'll pass it on to everybody else. Because free is always better. You know, seemed like it does. I don't know. I just don't remember like when I rolled for my stats. Yeah, the plus two below it is that like I rolled and it's fifteen. Is mm-hmm. that with the plus two or was that without the plus? No. Two? See, when you rolled, you put those numbers in there, and then there was like little charts, and those numbers lined up with you know a range of you know between this number and this number, you get a plus or negative or you know. Oh, okay. So, so. because my I rolled the fifteen, and yes. then I can add, I get plus yes. two. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's what I need to enter when I try it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, let us know if it works, and then I'll pass it on to everybody else, and they can do that with their characters too. You know, what's great is that one of our other players um, has, you know, wants to be a wants to DM. So he read up on all the rules and all this other stuff, and he's really and he's got a lot more time. I mean, he's younger, he's a young guy. He's got a lot more time, so he's he's actually probably more knowledgeable in a lot of the new mechanics than I am. And it's great because he's there to help, you know, you guys play. And then, of course. 
you know, Sean's uh, sitting next to you helping you, you know, play because you never played before. So mm-hmm. it's great that I've got the two of them, you know, with you and Foxtail to kind of help guide you guys in playing. Because mm-hmm. I've played with uh, with Sean for years. Like, we've played D&D for a while now. So yeah. it's great to see him help other people. And uh, it's it just makes it so much easier. That way I don't have to sit there and, like, stop the game and look up this rule and look up that and blah, blah, blah. Cause look that's, up this, you know, oh, got the character ability. Uh. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that really bog- – I hate when that kind of stuff bogs down the game. You know, I'm really not a big fan of sitting and figuring out the exact rule for this and that. And let's just have a good time. Cause really, well, that was one thing that I ended up doing. I remembered I had like some ability, and I was like, "Well, wait, no, I got this." Like, well, yeah. Well. And that's okay in the beginning because you got to learn how to do those things, you know. Mm. But um, like, I look at D and D like we're all telling a story together. Like, I've kind of put the framework together. I've made the setting. I've kind of introduced you know some of the uh, characters, the antagonists, and that kind of thing. But then you guys are helping to create the actual story. Like we're like a group of writers working on on a on like a TV show or a movie or something. And that's what I like about D and D. It's you know we're all contributing to the story. You should turn so, it into a TV show. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of people. Who, you know, as a matter of fact, there's one guy who was on uh, tabletop on the YouTube's recently. They were playing the a, a tabletop RPG. And he writes for a TV show. I don't remember what TV show it was, but he says that that's you know that he does things like this to prepare him for writing the the TV shows. It wasn't that he's Dan Harmon, was it? Hmm. It wasn't Dan Harmon, was it? I don't remember. Be quite honest. Guy that writes Rick and Morty. No, 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 no. Because no. he had a show with Harmon Quest where they mm-hmm. have like a live studio audience and they're they're playing the session in front of the audience. Honestly, if you want to have a good time, you should you need to look up um and it will really get you into like it'll, it'll help you learn kind of how to be a player. For D and D, look up. <laughs> I already know how to be a player. How you doing? Yeah. Play on, play on. But That's if you look up on the YouTube's, um, th- look up Acquisitions Incorporated, and watch their uh, their videos that they have from their PAX uh, gameplays. They're, they're playing they're playing Dungeons and Dragons on stage in front of you know thousands of people. Well, maybe hundreds of people. I don't know how many people. They're probably probably like twenties twenties of people. Mm. <laughs> dozens. Dozens of people. Dozens of people. But um yeah they're playing in front of in front of a live studio audience and it's really funny but it, it the, the things they come up with are hilarious but at the same time it kind of shows you how to be a player in a way you know mm-hmm. how to how to play D&D so I thought that was pretty cool they actually have a podcast too from when they were playing before they were doing these shows and stuff but that's the, they're they're great they're they're probably like I think their videos are like an hour to 2 hours a piece depending on the the games that they were doing at the time and and they're really cool so Check those out. Anybody that's listening should check those out because they're just they're just interesting. <laughs> mm. But uh, so yeah, I can't wait for the next game. Um, Brendan, who was playing with us, like I said, he wants to be a dungeon master. So uh, we'll probably do like a, a different game on a different Thursday that he can run, mm. so that he can kind of get his get his um, get his feet wet. Let know, him do Ninja like, Turtles. Hmm? Let him be the DM on Ninja Turtles. Well, but that's no, there's no story to that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I wouldn't mind that because I would love to play me some Donatello, but whatever. I want to be Raphael again. He was fucking <laughs> awesome. Wait, I got this one card that lets me uh, pick whatever I want. Oop, okay, I win. <laughs> yes. Raphael plays like a like a like a small child playing a game. Like this, game, this game's called I Win. <laughs> this game's called Raphael Wins. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was a close game though. If you didn't do that move, oh, you would have had. I was gonna hammer fist uh, Leonardo. Leonardo. He was toast. Yep. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. Yep. Raphael won. Because after you, it was my turn again. And I was going to just hammer fist him. I had, <laughs> you were, well, you were going I had some cards. Right I had some cards in my hand. I was just going <laughs> to just devastate him. He was going to be down, and I would have won the scenario. Because all you have to do is beat one turtle, you know? <laughs> but I call, it, I call it the Craven effect. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Craven effect. So those of you that didn't haven't heard that story last time we were talking about, we played uh, Marvel Munchkin. <laughs> and... <laughs> And uh, Foxtail hates the Munchkin games. She well, absolutely hates Well, I can them. see why. Yeah, because, well, and I get it, you know, because all those games are is, is, is fuck you. Like, how can I fuck you? Like, I'm going to fuck you by fucking you like this way, you know? Yeah. I'm going to fuck you this way. <laughs> and, you know, she's up. She's she's not doing bad at all. And then, you know, here comes this Craven trap card that I don't even remember what it did, but it just did some horrible Basically, she w- or got into a fight with me or I did something. And Didn't the Craven card kill her? Yes. Yeah. It, it was like we were like halfway into the game and yeah. I played the Craven card. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This kills you. 
<laughs> you're you're out of the game. You're out of the game completely. Like yeah. pack your shit and go. Like the circumstance that he had was like, you know, what she was doing. Something I forget. Well, this last time we played Marvel Munchkin, I think I pulled a rabbit out of the hat myself, if I'm not mistaken. I think I won this last one. Yeah, I won this last one because I won this last one because uh, everybody was busy fighting everybody else, basically, <laughs> oh, and yeah. I was offering to help everybody until the last second, and I was like, "And eh, screw you guys." <laughs> I win. Uh, you guys can try and stop me, but I'm like, my power is like 48. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody tried to throw in. Like they're just, all trying to pile on me. We I'm had like, nothing. And I'm like, do you have anything else? No, everything. But that was actually like really relatively early on in the game too. Like I don't oh, think it was won a short that. game. Well, oh no, that's what, I remember what it was. Now it's because we did not shuffle the cards enough. Oh, you got like, and I got like five oh, level yeah. up cards back to back. So, yeah. all right, the music's starting in. I guess we gotta get out of here. So. You guys have a good one. This is the Merce. This is Felton. And stay nerdy.